Hey guys, I'm Joel. As you can see, the condition of my E30 is absolutely atrocious right now. Every day that I've been driving the E30, the car is just continuously grabbing onto as much dirt as possible and scratching the whole paint up. And it's becoming to the point that I can't take it anymore. I wash it and an hour later, it's already covered in dirt because the paint is unprotected and I've left it unprotected because I want to ceramic coat the car. But I've been saying that I'm going to ceramic coat the car soon, so I'm not going to put any coating on it for a while now. So. Because of that, I'm just gonna get the ceramic coating done now so that I could just wash the car every few weeks and not have to worry about it and we can make videos and the car can look good. And I won't be having the car look like this because it's, it's bad, it's really bad. Like I'm very curious to see what all this is gonna look like because my exhaust is just constantly shooting fumes and flames and stuff onto the paint. So is the ceramic coating gonna protect all this? I'm definitely gonna keep you guys updated on that. On the quarter panel over here, I dropped my subwoofer in my parents' garage and it landed perfectly on this quarter panel right here. I was gonna have a PDR guy do it, but I haven't had anyone look at it. So I'm just gonna do the ceramic coating right over it. It hurts to do it, but I'll get it figured out eventually. I just have to get this car coated. It is very bad. With my passenger fender as well, when I lost the driver's side rear shock bolt pulling into my driveway, since the body was able to flex more, it caught onto my fender and cooked it. It doesn't happen anymore, obviously, because I put the bolt back in, but that one time completely fried my fender. But that's all right, because when I bought the car, it already had this like Bondo cracking on the fender. So I need to repaint this fender anyways. I'm gonna ceramic coat it for now, for the time being, just because, like I said, I wanted to paint the fender, but I can't keep having this car look like this. It is very bad. So with that, let's see what this transformation is like. And for reference, I washed this car like a week ago and it's this fried. It's just like a few days of pollen and like maybe a little bit of rain, just sprinkles. And this is how bad the car got. So with that, I hope you guys sit back, relax, enjoy this video. It's gonna be a long one. It's gonna be very satisfying. Let's get right into it. The inside of my barrels are absolutely cooked. This is the big reason why I wanted to do this. Oh, that's bad. I'm not making these wheels perfect just because I plan on driving this car a lot. They're gonna get cooked anyways. That's gonna be where I leave those. They're gonna get dirty again. I'm just gonna make sure that I clean them more frequently instead of letting them get so, so bad that it needs a crazy clean. If I do it once a year, they should stay pretty clean. What I do care about though is these faces. They cleaned up very well. I'm not sure if I need to repolish these lips so that I can get rid of this pitting right here. I'm almost positive that is what it needs. I just need to look it up and see how to get rid of all these marks. Just about out of wheel cleaner, but damn, not even a little bit left. Once that air dries, it's gonna look really good. It still looks pretty dirty when I come up close to it, but I can at least touch it and it's not getting me really dirty. So that's as good as I'm gonna get it because I don't wanna go in and repaint it. It's clean, it's just stained. 
Like all of this is clean to the touch. It's just stained from all the years of dirt on it. I want to get the car looking to about 90% of as good as it can. But small things like this, a little chip there, a little chip there. I probably should figure out a way to get some touch-up paint in there. Just because that's going to add a lot of value for the amount of time it's going to take. So I'm going to definitely do more research on how to do that. Something about this look, it's just, it's really good, I don't know. The wheels with no caps, but with bolts instead of the studs, it looks pretty clean, I don't know. Special wagon appearance. The water here at my shop is extremely hard on the mineral scale. If I fill up a cup of water in the sink over here, it looks all white and cloudy because of how many minerals it is. It's really bad. So when I wash a car with that, the water spots that it leaves, is kind of insane. So I want to really make sure that I don't let that water dry on the surface of the car. I don't have the seal for the hood, so water just gets right in. And all these water spots was from washing it. The engine bay was 100% clean before because I made sure to wipe it down. And look how dirty it got. So the water here is fried. It's destroying my car every time I clean it. Let's get all this nasty stuff off. Like, oh my God. In this pressurized sprayer, I have a cap full of this Optimum No Rinse. And this thing has a whole bunch of uses. It's basically a waterless wash. I'm gonna use this to clean up all the door jams and everything. I also mix the ONR with distilled water. None of that nasty hard water from my sink. So this stuff should be good. Damn, the amount of scratches in there is insane. A whole bunch of scratches running up and down. This whole door jam. It's still a little hazy, but it's all cleaned up now. I wanted to do this first so that I don't have an excuse of not wanting to get the nice exterior wet after it's all dried. Now I'm gonna use the ONR as a drying aid. I literally bought an iron decontaminator for the paint just for this car and I already dried the car off so I'm not using it. It's a lot cleaner now and it can look good but the problem with this right here is it's only gonna last an hour. I can promise you guys that. Like it looks really good, it's just not for long. I cleaned this area of the shop up a lot so that I have more room. I'm glad I did. It took a while, but you know, it's always worth it. I wanna take that logo off first. This car definitely deserves a new one of these. What is the right tool for this? Oh no, it's not, it's fucking my paint up. No, that's so fried. Is this gonna work, yo, please work. That is so sick, the zip tie technique. Let's go. That was insane. That was less than a minute with the zip tie. <laughs> the 
first time you ever taken that off. That is crazy. I've never taken my pop outs out before. It's as easy as that to take the whole window out. <laughs> That's crazy. Ooh, you guys hear that rain? It just started raining. Maybe this is what it needs. More work from up top. Oh my god, I did not mean to do that that quickly. Wow. My hands are getting sweaty doing little shit like this. Look at that, that is so sick. Look how dirty it is under it. Damn. Oh my God, I did it again, what the fuck? It's so easy to poke through and stab the body on the other side. You want beer? Oh my God. I'm all set, thank you, yo. <laughs> I figured it out. I had to be focusing on the A pillar, pulling it this way. Now, I think it's gonna come out easier up top over here. That was nerve wracking. Come on. Pushing at it from the bottom with your palm made it a lot easier. That was crazy. Front slides on. Cool. It was on Titan. Oh my god. I just pushed on it and the whole thing fell out. This front trim piece looks like it was held in by some RTV and it was really hard to get off. I just had to pry it, but yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I'm going to have to keep that in the back of my mind. Oh my God, that just definitely twisted it. Fuck. That is insane. Wow, that was insane. Seven minute clip. Knowing how to do it, still took seven minutes of fighting. <laughs> Oh my God, it's out, but that scared me. <laughs> I 
finally got it. A whole lot of finagling later. Lock is out. Can you guys have a guess how that happened? <laughs> Fuck! I just completely shattered my window. God damn it. That is so tough. I literally looked at the window and I was like, I should probably roll this up. Two seconds later, exploded. The tint is holding it together, but that's so fried. I took out all six bolts holding the bracket in. Those two inner ones, can't forget those. Oh my God, I knocked the glasses off my face. Taking this out before, as you can probably tell, this is sick. That nut way down there has to come out, as well as one where that hole is, but I already got that out. I'm gonna hit it with this synthetic clay bar and knock it all down and get it ready for polish. On the Miata, I used this way too much. I was going over the same section very many times. I'm gonna try and not do that now. Once again, the ONR's clay lube. You can kind of hear it. It's like four or five passes and then it doesn't need any more. And then there, you can't hear it anymore. And then there, you can't hear it anymore. That's crazy. There we go, that side is done. That part is ready for compound. Ooh, and it feels super smooth. There we go, the hood is done. Now I gotta just do that to the whole car. car is now fully clayed and it actually does look a lot shinier now like if I would have just done this clay and done a spray wax it would have held me over pretty good well but I want to do the full thing because as you can tell there's a crazy amount of scratches for the first step I'm gonna be using Griot's fast correcting cream every time I use this product I have insanely good luck so I'm gonna be using some of that with microfiber pads these microfiber pads cut so well and leave such a nice finish. So I'm gonna continue using them. And then I also have this three inch one with a one inch extension. Thank you Aiden for this idea because that's gonna make it a lot easier to get into small little places like up here would be nice with the one inch, but let's get right into it. I'm gonna start off by priming the pad, get some compound on it and make sure that the pad's not dry. Now that the pad is primed, I'm gonna just do a few dots. And that's all that it takes.
It's definitely better, but I gotta do one more. How is that looking, guys? Damn, my. It's still with the lights off. I'm gonna notice every little imperfection. I see what Aiden's talking about now. The lights off. You just want to keep going until it's a thousand percent perfect. So I've done two passes, which means I've wiped the compound off twice and done two full sets. And I think that's what the whole car is gonna get because it's about 90% there and up here as well. I also did the two passes. It's not 100% perfect, but it's close enough. And that is of course comparing it to what it was before, which is right here. Damn. So I'm gonna go on and finish this whole hood and see what it looks like right there. Look at that. With the black paint, I could definitely see the hazing that this cutting compound leaves. I'm definitely gonna hit it one more time. Damn. It was just bad before. Just need two passes everywhere. God, this looks so insane. <laughs> I can't wait to do the whole car. I was kind of dreading doing the two passes over everything, but after seeing the result that comes from it, I'm doing it everywhere. This is crazy. I really enjoyed that I took all the trim off before doing the clay bar, and this exactly is why. When I did the Miata, I did the clay bar first and then took everything off and it just made the whole car extremely dirty again. And when you do the clay bar with the waterless wash, it's basically washing the car one last time. And I really like that. So these are the last two things that have to come off. I don't think there's that much of a difference on the camera, but in person there is. The entire hood is officially done with the compound. I hit it with the two passes and it's looking crazy. <laughs> Let's keep going. Just one pass. Damn. I'm gonna do one more pass. I kind of like going really slow on the first pass to go in and take a bunch of scratches out and then come in a little bit faster as like a top coat and it's been working pretty well. Let's see how it turns out. That's after the second pass. I didn't know whether to use that three inch buffer or the big five inch buffer over there but it was definitely a lot easier with the three inch. There's just too many lines and too many direction changes on the side of the car. So I think I'm gonna do the whole side of the car with that three inch. One big thing about detailing that is super slept on is deciding what size area you wanna work. It's kind of difficult because <laughs> there's so many different options that you can do to get one whole panel done. You can do just the top strip first and then the bottom after, or you can do by squares. There's just so many variations. There's obviously some ways that are better than others. On the fender, I think it makes sense to use the three inch pad, but maybe once I go over to the door and these big parts up top, I can do the three inch, and then in the middle and lower part, I can use the bigger pad. I think that makes the most sense, to be honest. Is there any difference? Probably. Pass number one. Pass number two. This machine vibrates so much more than the Griot's three inch.
but I don't know if it's because of the size or... I was gonna use the big buffer on this side, but the vibrations of the machine, I can't take it anymore. I need to use the Griot's machine. Because that porter and cable, it's just beating my wrists up. And with the smaller pad, you have more control over all the edges and stuff. So I'm gonna use that and see how this turns out. I don't know if it's just because I'm getting better, but one pass with that three inch pad is providing insane results. I'm still gonna do two because everyone else has two, but it's looking really good off of just one pass now. And there's the second pass. It's still a little bit hazy. It's a lot more noticeable with the black paint, but once I come in with the polish, it's gonna get rid of all that haziness and make it really shine. Ooh, I hope you guys are excited for this one. This is gonna be a crazy transformation on this trunk. I'm assuming all the flat surfaces that collect a lot of dirt get way more scratched up because this is absolutely brutal. I need to change the way that I wash my car because it's clearly not working. <laughs> As you could probably tell, this is just unacceptable. I've been spending so much time trying to make sure that the before shot is visible so you guys can see the scratches. And it's very difficult with these lights. It's like an art to be able to show what you're detailing. Vamos a ver how this turned out. I think I'm making it worse doing those passes like that. I need to get a new rag. I think this one's fully contaminated with compound. Damn, one pass did a lot. That is incredible. The rag that I was using was full of compound, like I said, and I didn't get a new one. And as you can see, it instantly scratched the surface. So I'm gonna do one more light pass over it. And I got a new rag. This is now the last brand new rag that I have. I washed the other ones, but I don't know if I can trust it to be 100% clean. So I'm gonna have to just risk it after this rag is cooked. It felt like I was going really fast on this pass, and I don't know if the speed that I was going would do well on getting rid of scratches, but I'm gonna try it next time because this looks pretty good. I don't know, it's always been a big smudge. Damn. Okay, that is good to know. That speed I was going in that last section, I did it again. And there's still a little bit too many scratches. I've definitely seen more removal on one pass when I go slower. So very good to know. I just had to test that because just doing three passes like that has been taking five minutes every single time. And I'm doing two coats over the same section. So I'm doing 10 minutes per section of actual polishing time and it's taking a pretty good amount of time. So I just had to try if going a little bit faster provides the same results. It does not, so I'm gonna take my sweet ass time. Once you get the bright lights off the paint, it looks crazy. It's literally a mirror. This is gonna be a really good transformation. There's a whole bunch of, it looks like a whole bunch of pitting from the exhaust. So let's see if that comes out. The first pass got all the pitting out from the exhaust, but it did leave some scratches over here. So I'm gonna continue applying pressure. This is also gonna be a really good one. I was gonna do one more coat on that side and I hit this side with the damn wire for the polisher and it left some good scratches into there. Fuck. Oh my God, it looks horrible on camera. What the hell? It looks, but then, <laughs> but then I go over here. The back license plate area and trunk are officially done. It's looking really good. I can move on now. It's just like an instant thing that you notice. Just look at. <laughs> This is definitely the worst defect on the whole car. I'm very curious to see how many of those scratches get taken away. Mmm, it's a good bit better. Not all the way. Yeah, it needs a good bit more to be honest. It's a lot better now, but once I get the one inch pad on, I'm gonna come back and only focus on that tiny little area and try and see if I can get that a little better. But I also don't want to go too far. I don't want to go through the paint, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to try my luck at that. 
And this is after only the compound. I can't wait to finish and see what it looks like with the ceramic coating. So much wind noise inside the car. I'm gonna hit the car with some isopropyl alcohol now to get rid of all the compound that is left on the car. After this, I'll be able to come back and polish everything. But I gotta get this residue off. Of course. Does it make sense to sell it? I'm officially done with the compound on the car. Finally. Eden was not kidding when he said, take a week to do it. I didn't think he meant take just a week cutting the car with the compound alone. That was so insane. My body is so sore from this, but it was worth it. It was basically as if I did two E30s and I ended up using the three inch pad more than everything because this six inch pad that I had ended up being less contact patch because of the angle of the curves in the car. So it was a blunder on my part. I didn't have the proper equipment. I should have had a five inch microfiber pad. That definitely would have helped a lot. But I can't believe how shiny it is and I haven't even done the polish. I don't know if it looks better with the lights on or off, but there's still a little bit of haziness. I have never seen the haze on any kind of car with color this car or a black with metallic but now that i'm doing this flat black car it's definitely visible like the little imperfections it's just you can go absolutely insane trying to get this no metallic black to be absolutely perfect everywhere but that's just too time consuming for me in the roof there's a pretty good amount of scratching and i think it could be from using the dirty microfiber towel but instead of hitting this with compound again i'm gonna try and hit it with polish and see what it does it's very light but I also took the sunroof seal out because I have a brand new seal. So once I'm done with the ceramic coat, I'm going to put a brand new seal into that. I really shot myself in the foot because I only had two of these little ass three inch pads and one big six inch pad. So just not the right equipment, but I made do with it and I paid for it because it took so long having to continually wash these pads once they stop working. Also, the one inch pad was so clutch for all these areas down here below the windshield. That would not have been possible with the big pad. I've learned a whole lot about this car looking at every nook and cranny over this past week. This door is not looking good. So I now know 100% this car was resprayed. It's probably obvious for some of you, but I just didn't really know. This paint inside of here, chipping, brutal. So if I keep picking at it, all that is loose. Look at it, oh no. So. I have to be super careful with that. I don't want it to get worse, but it's going to eventually. Whoever painted the car did not know how easy it was to take this back window out, the pop out, and just paint everything. <laughs> it definitely kind of sucks to tape stuff up and go around everything. But yeah, I don't know. This is definitely original right here. So they literally could have just taken this seal off and painted all around, but whatever. It kind of sucks. Yeah, there's still a little bit, it's just, 
I need to be using cleaner microfiber towels. It's scratching the paint again after I spent so long de-scratching it. Yeah, I'm such an asshole for not getting five inch microfiber pads. Look at the size difference. Five inch to six inch. This pad would have been so much easier to work on my 830. I'm annoyed, but that's whatever. I'm gonna be using this Griot's Perfecting Cream and let's see what the results of this. I really just wanna get this done. Let's blaze through this. reflection is insane now. <laughs> I can actually use it as a mirror. Holy shit! I can see the pores in my face. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. It definitely got rid of that haziness I was talking about. What the fuck? This is absolutely insane though. I hope you guys are enjoying the transformation because I'm loving it. It's taking so long, but every step of the way, it's a very noticeable difference right away. It's like I can never fully imagine what it's gonna look like after, but then seeing it done, it's like, holy shit. I didn't think it could get like that. Like all this dust here, instead of wiping it off before, I'm just gonna do the polish and see what happens. God, this transformation might have been the craziest one with the polish. It had so many scratches. I thought I was gonna have to come in with the cutting compound again, but the polish got rid of it all. What? What I'm coming to realize while doing this detailing is that when you're working on a pure black car that shows every imperfection, it's basically as if you're a fucking surgeon and everything you do has to be so clean and surgical. If the towel is just a little bit too dirty, you're just gonna instantly scratch the whole surface that you just spent so much time getting perfect. And there's just like, you need a lot of clean microfiber towels. You need a lot of clean pads to work with. It's just it's a lot more demanding than I thought it would be. And the biggest lesson of them all, I would always be very impulsed to just wanna wipe off all the dirt and dust that I get from the working other panels. So say if I'm done with the hood and I'm working on the fender, I would see dust on the hood and want to wipe it off, but that is scratching the shit out of the hood. So I have to leave all the imperfections. That's a little bit of polish that got flung around until I come in with the isopropyl alcohol and wipe the whole car down. So I have to leave all the dust on the car basically until I'm done. I would have never known that just because when I was detailing the other cars that aren't as sensitive as this pure black, I picked up some bad habits of just being lazy, not switching out pads and stuff. This is a very good lesson. I'm learning so much about detailing, getting this car done. Whenever you see someone doing a black car, it actually takes a pretty good amount of talent and knowledge to get a black car looking absolutely crystal clear with zero scratches at all. It's very hard. The car is officially polished and it took so long, but I've really wanted to go through this car for so long. So now that I had the chance to do it, I couldn't pass up the chance to just go all out and put my all into it. I've been staying late here every day for the past week working on this thing. Just doing the compound and polish. Compounding took a solid like four or five days, mainly because of my air. I was using a three inch pad on the entire car basically, except for like the hood trunk and roof which sucked. I highly do not recommend that, but 
It's all I had. It's looking unreal. Now I'm gonna wait to wipe the whole car down with isopropyl alcohol until I'm fully ready to do the ceramic coating because I want the whole car to be stripped of any kind of grease and anything in dirt before the ceramic coating. So like it's still a little bit dirty, but the shine and reflection is what we're after. Damn. It's just everywhere you look, shiny. Oh my God, look at it. <laughs> but now I have to address all the trim of the car. There's no way I'm putting this back on looking like this. The corner of the bumpers, these are for the 325Es. They always look like this and they start to like pit up a little bit. And whenever I wash the car, like run a towel over it, the towel always leaves lint on this. And it just makes it really annoying to clean the bumpers. So I wanna try and paint this trim black, but I don't know how this is gonna sand or how this is gonna look. So I'm very curious how this is gonna come out. This trim that goes over the diving board, you can see it's just so rough and it's holding on to any kind of lint. It looks like shit. And I'm also gonna do this trim here, those two trims there. I also wanna polish both of these bumpers, but I have to remove the coating that's on them first. So I'm gonna do that in another video. This video is already too long, I already know it is, even though I haven't edited it, but I wanna make these aluminum bumpers shine like crazy and it's gonna match the car and it's gonna look so good, but I'll do that in another video. The first step, I gotta get this trim all cleaned up. I got dish soap and water in here. I'm just gonna give it a good wipe down. It's just getting stuck. I have to preface, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just trying to make it work. I'm gonna hit it with some 220 grit now that it's degreased. If I can get this smooth, that'd be a really big achievement. I'm gonna try and sand the bottom of it first. See what happens. This is flexible rubber, so. I don't think I should be wet sanding it, but it definitely feels a lot smoother already, so I'm just gonna keep going. Whoa, it feels so much better now. It's definitely a lot smoother. I think this is gonna work. This is gonna look really good when it's done. A few minutes of sanding later, and it's definitely getting a lot better. It feels smooth compared to over here. And it looks like it's almost about to be solid plastic. I think these white spots are the low spots. If I keep going, I believe it's all gonna turn into this color right here. And it will be smooth at that point. But I also don't wanna go too much. It's kind of a tricky thing when you're learning, but I'd rather actually learn, so I'm just gonna keep going. Since I feel a little more confident now, I'm gonna use 220 grit on the DA. And get this done. Let's see what happens with this. I got it all washed and it's a lot smoother, but it still has a bunch of little pits. I don't know. I don't know what it's gonna look like when it's fully painted, but going down to get all of these is gonna take a really long time because this has been taking a while, but yeah, I don't know. If I choose to go down 100% and get rid of every single little crater on this, then I'm gonna have to do it for all of them. I don't think I wanna do that. <laughs> There's five pieces and this is one of five that I have to do. This one for the front bumper is extremely bad. You see it holding on to all the microfiber. But then this one is fine, so I have to do one. This one for the rear bumper doesn't have it anywhere except for this top corner. So this one's not too, too bad either. And then this one is also fried on top. So I guess I'm gonna go down all the way. I keep forgetting that adding a good amount of pressure gives you a way better result quicker <laughs> but it's very smooth now this turned out a lot better than i thought it would i'm only getting it 98 percent i kind of fucked up though i should have just used the iso wipe on this because that little bit of polish that was left on the car 
Oh my god. Acted like a magnet for all the dirt and dust that I was sanding. Fuck. I don't know if this is gonna scratch the paint when I go to take it off. One of the things with painting, if you don't do it often like me, is every time you paint a new material or even just paint old material like metal, you forget the processes sometimes. And here, I was trying to find if I could use red scuffing pads on plastic and it was advised not to after a bunch of research. You gotta use this gray one so that it doesn't leave as deep of scratches. This is a little bit finer than the red maroon pads. So hopefully it'll give a better result. I'm just coming in and scuffing all this up. I think I'm gonna come in and do a little more like this. I don't know if it's gonna be visible when I do the trim black, so I think I'm just gonna come in and hit it a little more. One thing I do know is you cannot forget to show love to the edges, because then that's gonna make the paint job not as good if the paint doesn't stick on the edges. This right here is gonna be the star of the show. I've heard so many good reviews about this product. SEM Trim Black. Everyone that, are you serious? What is up with this camera? What is it focusing on the wheel for? Every single person that has used this said this product is incredible and it looks insane. So I'm definitely trying that out. And since it has such good reviews, I'm gonna try everything out, SEM. Plastic and leather prep. Let's wipe these parts down. Get it ready for paint. I'm gonna hit it with some adhesion promoter before. I'm gonna do two light coats like that and start spraying. Here goes nothing. Oh my god, it's dripping already. What the hell happened? What? Why did it spray so crooked? Why is it spraying like that? Oh my god. It's because I turned the tip. I'm so stupid. Oh my god. I turned the tip. It's running like crazy. I need to go wipe this off. There's no way. Fuck. I'm literally just gonna wipe it off. This is crazy. I'm such an idiot. I turned the nozzle thinking that it was gonna spray straight, but it sprayed horizontally, so it just shot a whole bunch of product. Fuck, I'm such an idiot. There we go. It does say medium coats. There's a little bit of texture on this right here. I'm gonna hit it with the plastic prep and see if it gets rid of the... I don't know how to save it, but I might have to sand that down to get it smooth again. Damn, I might actually have to go sand that down with the actual sander. Fuck. It happened on the most visible part, the top. I want to make sure that I get this looking good. Third and last coat. Just like that, it's sanded and ready for paint again. 
while the ones in the background are gonna be left to dry now. Now I can get this piece painted as well. I just got it washed in the bathroom sink and it's all nice and clean now. With this trim, since it's smooth already and it doesn't have a texture, I can just hit it with the gray scotch pad and then paint it right away, damn near. The bottom piece came out so clean, but the top one is kind of rough. Let's see if there's a difference with this. This plastic did not like the adhesion promoter. It started reacting weirdly. And now I don't really know what I'm going to do. I think I'm just going to try and sand it again and just hit it with the trim black right away and see if it looks smooth. I don't know. The gray scuff pad got it looking decent again. Let's try this again, just with the SEM directly onto this. I sanded these metal door handles with 400 grit sandpaper and use some foam cleaner. Let's see what these look like. An hour and a half of sanding with not a single distraction and it's finally done. This takes so long to get all the little imperfections out, but it's worth it. It's kind of crazy because this one can did three coats onto all of this trim. That's crazy coverage. This thing got a lot of use, but everything is looking so good. I understand the hype now because this looks insane. I didn't think this would make this much of a difference. It was all so rough, and I thought it was going to just stay like that, but damn, I can't get over this. This looks insane. Next up, I'm going to use the fast correcting cream on these taillights, and I think it's going to bring out such a good shine. I'm going to go through the same process as I did on the car, and I'm also going to hit these corner markers as well. This is going to make such a difference. All the parts are clean now, and I went ahead and grabbed the turn signals while I was here from the front bumper. Boom, officially done. Compounded, polished, everything is good to go and ready to get ceramic coated. The tail lights came out as you expected. Amazing. Everything is just super glossy now and the ceramic coating is gonna make it 20 times glossier. So I've heard. This little detail does so much to the car. If these are dusty, the car would kind of look crazy. I sprayed the car down with the air compressor. Now I'm gonna use the ISO. I'm really hoping I don't scratch the paint right now, but I'm gonna try and be very careful. The only reason why I didn't go and buy new microfiber towels is because I had to order them and I was already saying that it's going to be done really soon so I just didn't do it because I thought it was going to be done soon but it ended up making it take longer because I didn't just wait for 
the microfibers to come in and work from there. So if I'm gonna do ceramic coating again, I'm gonna make sure I have a crazy amount of microfiber towels that once you do one pass, you flip it and don't use that side again. And once all eight sides of the folded up microfiber are used, wash them. Don't use them to pick up any kind of dirt and then I'll be able to use them on the paint again confidently because the moment there's any kind of little bit of dirt on there, I don't trust it on the paint anymore. So because of that, I went to Detail Garage and got me some microfiber towels. I got some loot. First off, I should have gotten one of these a while ago. It's a five inch microfiber cutting pad. My six inch was way too big, as you guys know. And then as well, I got some microfiber towels. We should be good now. There's nine in here and folding up the towels into eights. I have 72 clean surfaces for this car. I should be good till the end with this. So many lessons learned, but I hope you guys can learn from me. Don't skimp on microfibers or any just pads in general, everything. Don't skimp on anything when you're ceramic coating a car. So again, I don't wanna wash the car with the water because the water here is very harsh and that's just gonna make it a lot more complicated. So I'm gonna try and do this optimum no rinse. Rinseless wash, a YouTuber, Wilson Auto Detailing, had a video about doing a rinseless wash on a car with microfiber towels and it's a very good video. I highly recommend you go watch that. How he did it, I really liked the process of washing the car with no water. He just took a half gallon of distilled water and two ounces of optimum no rinse Normally this optimum no rinse goes two ounces for four gallons, but he just added a lot more solution to make it more concentrated. So I'm gonna put the towels in here and wash the whole car with that. And once all the dirt is off of the car, I can come in with the isopropyl alcohol and safely wipe the whole car down and not worry about scratching it. I'm learning a whole lot during this. Okay. This bucket might be way too big. I'm about to go get another bucket. Low ass bucket transfer. Damn, that solution is so blue. I did all that with one towel, now I'm gonna switch it off and do the rest of this side and the roof with the other towel. As you can see, the car is totaled again. <laughs> I'm most likely gonna have to recompound and polish the entire car. I guess it's just been doomed the moment I started sanding the trim with the polish still on the car. Very good lesson was learned. I'm never doing that again. The moment I finish compounding or polishing, I'm using the isopropyl alcohol to clean the excess off. Yeah, this is brutal. <laughs> this is brutal. I've been doing this for like two weeks straight, staying late, trying to get this done as fast as possible. And I'm just endlessly getting taught these brutal ass lessons. This is just, this black car is not forgiving at all. So I'm just gonna do the whole car again off camera. We're gonna skip right to the ceramic coating because I just need to get this done. <laughs> It's been a few days now and I've caught back up to where I was before making the previous air. And the car is fully polished. What I ended up having to do is polish on the whole car and then compound and polish on both fenders and the hood. 
they were really bad and super scratched up, especially the hood. But it's all ready to get isopropyl alcohol and wipe down. I'm officially back to where I was. Polish alone ended up getting majority of the scratches out. But I do have to say the biggest L that I've taken so far was with this piece of shit right here. It's not the mask's fault, it's my fault. I had the bottom straps way too tight around my neck when I was sanding the bumper piece. And it was like pulling my neck in like this for like an hour and a half. I thought it was just a little bit uncomfortable, nothing too bad. And when I took it off, it felt like I slept 10 hours tweaked on my neck. My neck hurts so bad and it still hurts a really good amount. So please don't do that. Don't tighten these too much. It was a very valuable lesson that I learned and it still hurts right there. Oh, what a journey of events. This is just L after L after L. <laughs> Let's get into finishing this though. The next steps, I wanna wipe the whole car with alcohol and then I wanna come in and use the touch up pen that I got on all these little scratches or areas that need it. And then I can do the ceramic coating over top of that and the car should be good. There's little spots in the paint that I'm kind of too scared to attack aggressively because I don't want to damage the clear coat. And I don't know if that's like tree sap or damage in the clear coat. It's just like little specks. I'm just going to leave them. Like this one right here looks to be clear coat instead of tree sap. So I'm not going to try and make the car 100% perfect. The chipping on the door has gotten worse with the air compressor. This is just a tragedy. If I pick that up, it's gonna keep going. I'm gonna try and just keep it like that. And also over here, I hit this dent with the one inch pad to try and get more of the scratches out. And of course, I think I went through a little bit of clear coat. This right here, I don't know if that's clear coat or through the paint or, yeah, I don't know. It just, it got a little bit worse. It was just a little dot and then it spread out. I'm not sure if I should try and tap that with a touch-up pen, but there's a lot of areas that need that touch-up pen. It's probably 50 plus spots. Like that's just a little bit of chipped paint. Gonna come in and fill that in. These scratches right here. Another little bit of chipped paint right there. But as you can see, it is extremely reflective and the scratches are a lot better now than they were before. There's still that haziness, so let's clean all this up. While I was doing the polish, I got in the habit of always putting the dirty side up of the microfiber and I would lay it on this clean surface right here. So the clean side is always down when I go to put it on the paint to clean off the surface that I worked. Flip it over, brand new clean side. I'll clean that panel down and then I will not use this dirty side again. I'll flip over to another side and clean the next section off with a perfectly clean side. So like with this black paint, you just gotta be very meticulous to make sure everything is clean, making sure these towels aren't touching anything dirty. It's just, it's kind of insane. I've been working on this car every day for two and a half weeks, all day, all night. This is the only thing I've been doing. And I'm at the point where I damn near have PTSD. I really don't wanna scratch this paint up, but I gotta finish. Fuck. Anytime I touch the paint now, I'm just so scared of there being scratches after. This is just, it's a mental hurdle now at this point. I have not gotten further than this step here, so I'm really hoping that there's no scratches when I'm done with this wipe down. One thing I am paying attention to is I'm not putting a lot of pressure and I'm going very slowly so that the microfiber can do all the work and not the pressure of me pushing down. So I'm gonna just do this to the whole car. Be very careful. I'm on the home stretch. I don't wanna mess anything up. Still a few scratches, but I think that was just from not fully removing them with the compound and polish. There's still some scratches in the damn fucking paint. I don't know if that was just 
from wiping it down or if it was there from before but when the polish was there it looked like there was no scratches and then when I wipe it it looks like there's scratches <laughs> but I do have to say it's only when I put this insanely bright light onto the paint which I've never done ceramic coating before so I don't know if all of this is gonna be visible when it's done. At this point, I don't even care anymore. Whatever is the condition of the paint is how it's gonna be left. Cause there's, just, I don't know how to make it 100% scratch free. This is just absolutely insanity. So the paint does look extremely good from stepping back, which I guess I, that's just what I have to go off of. If it looks good from back here, then it should be fine. But I guess, yeah, I'm going into the most insanely nitpicky area but I've seen so many people have good results of like no scratches or any kind of marking at all but this definitely still has some yeah and I don't know if I'm supposed to go over like there's still a little bit of water spots from the ISO I definitely sprayed way too much ISO I came back with a second wipe and less ISO and I don't know maybe that's what did it look at this it's still kind of pretty bad like it was not like this, it was not like this right when I finished the polish. I don't think it was. Or it was the polish that was hiding all of this. Like what the fuck? <laughs> what is all this? It looks good, but there's still swirls on it. It has to be from that last ISO wipe down it. There's no way. People said that on the Schwarz Black E30. A universal black is gonna work just fine since there's no metallic, no flake, no nothing. It's just straight black. I'm gonna try it on the bad fender first so I can try and get the hang of it and then we can move on to the more critical pieces. So this tip is a little scraper. You first hit it with this. I've never done this before, but I wanna try and get the hang of it. Oops, see, I just went out of the hole and scratched outside by accident. I pushed it into a napkin to get paint flowing. Now let's see what happens. Oh shit. Okay, so you're not supposed to push it down, you're just supposed to tap it. A chip that big, I should definitely use the brush. That's the thing with this, it's gonna make a mountain. It's gonna look crazy. Good thing I'm testing it. I did it over here and a bunch of paint came off of the brush and into... Oh my God, look at it, it looks crazy. <laughs> That looks so bad, what the fuck? So now those two are the same color, but they kind of stick out even more now. <laughs> I'm gonna take all the practice I can get. I had paint flow down from the shaft onto the panel, so <laughs> I gotta make sure there's no dripping action. Hey, that's actually not too bad. Gotta be real slow and patient with it. And it actually doesn't come out. Damn, that actually looks pretty good. I forgot to wipe it with the isopropyl alcohol, but this is on the bad fender. It's a good thing I tried it on this one first because I made a few mistakes. Damn, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit so it can dry up. Big thing with this touch-up paint is that it prevents rust from happening in that chipped paint. But like that right there, that looks pretty good. Holy shit. I'm gonna do two coats on everything just to fill in. Damn, this is making such a crazy difference. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Once you get it to actually go, it's not bad, but to get it started is weird. 
I was contemplating not doing those two little dots over there just because of how small they were. But standing back over here, it makes such a difference. Like right there, instantly you can see that's a little rock chip right there. But nothing over here. You can also see that's another one. You can see there's a few by the door over here. When that's filled in, it's gonna look actually 20 times better. Granted, up close, it's still noticeable, but from afar, it's not noticeable. So that's really what counts. 50% chance of this looking worse after. Yeah, up close, it still looks brutal, but from afar, it's not too bad. I'm really starting to question whether this is worth it, but I'm just gonna do it anyways. It looks so much better when I use the brush to apply it, but the brush, it's so easy to overdo it. Should I even try for this big ass scratch? I don't even know. I can't bring myself to do the bottom one. The top one is done, but it looks so bad. It's still so noticeable that it's there. Even though it's black, now I have no doubt that this is gonna look worse after, but I'm still gonna do it anyways, so it's all the same color. It's done, it looks 1% better, but it's just because the other paint is so good that this is always gonna stick out. Areas like this though are perfect because when my pop out opens, you can see into that and see that little bit of rust. And I don't want it to continue rusting, so I'm definitely gonna hit it. Much better. I'm gonna hit this with the compound and polish real quick while the touch up paint on the E30 dries because I have to do one more ISO wipe down on the car. I don't want it to wipe away the paint. Compounded and polished. The main thing that matters is this because this is what sits under the grill and kidneys and that's visible. But it looks way better now. Now that this is done, I got the car wiped down one last time with isopropyl alcohol. I was a lot lighter with it this time, just misting it very lightly. And it's ready for ceramic coat. I'm gonna start up here on the roof. With my track record on this project, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. I really just wanna apply this properly and be done with this. <laughs> I got the G-Technic Crystal Serum Light. Three towels, this is gonna be the first wipe, this is gonna be the second wipe, and then this is to make sure that I got my last three microfiber towels <laughs> out of all the ones that I bought. Let's get this going. Making sure to shake it. To prime the pad, I have to use three of these pipettes. I'll work it into itself. Like I said, I've never done this. This is my first time. Kinda nervous. Let's just give it a go. This might be kind of a big section. I think I gotta hurry up. Oh, this is such a big section. No way! Did I actually fuck this up? Dude, it's streaky on the bottom half of the panel. I definitely did too big of a fucking panel, dude. I'm gonna lose my shit. Please get saved, it's definitely fucked. God damn it. Dude, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. This is so insane, it's streaky as hell down here. I don't even know what to do. I was going too slow. What the fuck? Dude, this is a joke. This is literally a joke. Down here it's flashing. I'm just gonna wipe down here off. Okay, up here it's flashing too. I can see it kinda. It's super slick now, but I don't know, I saw so many streaks down in this bottom part because I took so long doing it up there. It looks fine now, but isn't it a great 
feeling when you're nervous to do something and instantly you get showed why you're nervous? <laughs> it starts fucking up off rip. I need to take a breather after that one. What just happened? Yeah, that size panel worked out a lot better. The first one I did was way too big. Now that I started, the nervousness is gone. I already got the first mess up out of the way. <laughs> it's only gonna get better from here. quick because it's set pretty quick on the roof. So it started flashing quick on the roof, but I was going extremely slow. Hopefully you guys can see when it starts to flash up. It starts to bubble, but I don't know how much or how frequent you want the bubbles to be. Just whenever I start to feel uncomfortable, that's when I'm wiping it off. <laughs> I just gotta let that ceramic coat penetrate into the paint. And then once the paint is full, that's when you want to wipe it off. But I don't know what the signal of being completely full and saturated is. Okay, I'm uncomfortable now. I'm wiping it off. <laughs> there we go. That is the whole process. Now I just continue on my way. Let it flash and wipe off. I was gonna say that first panel, me applying it was just a skill issue. <laughs> it definitely was, because I was able to do this one, but you just gotta make sure you go quick. I was going way too slow on that first pass, but now I know. She's good to go now. Forearms on fire, oh my god. I dropped the foam on the second to last. I have just these two lower sections left. I don't know what to do. This is fried. I might try and use the back side. No, nah, there's no way I can use the back side. I just cleaned the pad with my fingers and got all the dirt out. This area down here is fried anyways from all the rock chips, so it's not that bad anyways. One more. Boom! The ceramic coating is officially done, except for the valence, but still, the body side is done. I only ended up using these two towels for everything, did not end up needing this one. And to do the whole body of my E30, that's how much fluid was used. This is a 30 milliliter bottle, so yeah, not bad. Wow, it looks really good. <laughs> it's so shiny now. Now before I leave, I have to clean these before the ceramic coat settles in here and completely totals the towel. It was about 9.30 when I started applying the ceramic coating and now it is 
I could have done multiple panels at once while one was flashing through the other one, but for my first time, I didn't want to get too overwhelmed. I'm going home. It's the next day now. The car looks absolutely amazing. It's been 12 hours since I applied the coating and it feels so slick. It feels insane. I'm still not done though. I still got a little bit more to do. Got a ceramic coat the tail lights and all the trim pieces. Yeah, I don't want to look at it too much because I just want to get it done. I'm going to shift my focus, fill in all the ugly spots with the touch-up paint. Even though I do want to get a cow catcher, so this is only going to be for temporary, but for now at least, I can make it look decent. That looks so much better. Down here, the touch-up paint looks so much better because there's already a little bit of a texture on there. It's mainly when it's a mirror finish that it's very noticeable that there's touch-up paint, but here you can barely tell. I think it looks a whole lot better. It's crazy because I finished coating the E30 Wednesday night at 12 a.m. And then Thursday, I had to spend the whole day getting ready for the drift event, which was yesterday on Friday in my E46. I had really good luck. It was kind of overkill bringing all those tires, but I can finally finish the E30 now. I've been dying to do this for so long. I'm going to pick up where I left off on that valence and get that thing coated. I don't know what would happen if I reused this applicator pad that I had from before, but I'm gonna try it. That's the only way to actually find out. I'm assuming I gotta prime it like normal with the three pipettes. I'm also gonna do the tail lights, so I'll do three full ones. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Maybe that's too much and it's overkill, but let's try it. I think I could do this whole thing in two sections. Let me try it. Yeah, very easily did half of that. It's about ready to get wiped off. I love the instant feeling of slickness that this ceramic coating gives. Very nice. Damn, this is actually very easy to coat. This is gonna repel dirt so nice now because it's right on the front. This gets the dirtiest. Next up, I gotta treat the lights exactly like paint. It's kind of crazy because now that I'm paying attention to it, it feels like the lights and paints are grabbing onto the gloves and acting like a magnet. But when it's ceramic coated, it just glides super easily. I gotta hit these with the isopropyl to get the compound off. I don't know what's gonna happen with the ceramic coat and plastic. They recommend a different ceramic coating, but of course, they just wanna sell another product. I'm trying to see if I could just make the same bottle work on the whole car. Granted, it probably works better, but we work with what we got. Cool, so it looks like the taillights is receiving that ceramic coat similarly to paint. It's bubbling up the same way, saying that it's ready to get wiped off. Very good to know. Super slick, let's go. Yes, these two lights are gonna look so good. Now I'm gonna put the ceramic coat on this and then right away put the ceramic coat on those so that they flash at the same time. Let's go. All the lights are officially done. I can't wait to see this back on the car. The corner of my taillights also had a little bit of rust. I came in, touched them up with a touch-up paint, and looks-wise, it looks 20,000 times better. These are the last pieces that need to get compounded and polished. This is all dirty, I gotta wash it first. And compound, polish, ISO, and ceramic coat. But I don't know if I can compound this chrome trim. I have no idea. So I'm gonna get them washed. They're all cleaned up. Damn! And this article says Meguiar's says that you can treat chrome and aluminum as if it were painted and use normal compound or polish. So I'm going to try exactly that. I don't know what type of aluminum or chrome or whatever. I'm pretty sure this is just plastic 
covered in chrome. There's a little bit of overspray here, so I'm just gonna hope the compound gets rid of it on both surfaces. I completely forgot to clay bar it before doing this, and it fried the pad. <laughs> That's what it looks like if you don't clay bar your car, and it doesn't work as well if it's like this, because it's not compound, it's just spreading dirt. I'm gonna have to hit it one more time to see if I can get this little overspray off, but it definitely worked on the chrome. It looks really good now. I wasn't expecting to have to do the chrome trim, but with detailing, now I know why every detailer is sick in the head, because <laughs> Once you start detailing, the details is all you can notice. It's kind of brutal. <laughs> but once you get all the details ironed out, it looks really good. So I'm gonna have to do this trim on the door and these two trims that go above the window right there. This is kind of insane because I thought I was gonna be able to finish yesterday. And then I realized I can polish all of the chrome on the car. And since I did it to the one on the window trim on the back, I have to do it to all now. I already hit this one by hand with the correcting cream and with the perfecting cream. Since it's so small and thin, I'm doing them all by hand because it is brutal to hold this with the machine. So I'm just doing it all by hand. And like these little clips down here, had to hit these as well. I'm gonna ceramic coat it once everything is ready to go so I don't have to keep letting this pad dry out. And then I looked over here and I also have to hit all of this as well crazy amount of chrome that I didn't think was gonna have to happen but as you can see there's just like water spots and harshness on there so it has to get cleaned up like the difference between the chrome that's done and not done it's too noticeable so I'm just gonna get all this chrome trim done as quick as possible by hand this is just it is insanely tedious I've been losing my mind doing all the chrome on those windows and then I found more chrome on the floor. So I'm gonna take a break from that and I'm gonna install these tail lights. I really wanna see what these look like. Finally it has a tail light. Damn, the black looks so black now with the tail light in. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, that looks much better. You guys really thought I was gonna use that dusted ass logo. This is cutting it extremely close. I have to coat the chrome trim on both of the pop outs. All of this right here, all of the bumper trim. This is gonna be the priority. I'm gonna do this first. The window chrome, I finished doing them by hand. They look pretty good and the door chrome on both sides. So I gotta do all that with that amount of ceramic coating. <laughs> it is so little, I'm gonna have to really stretch out this ceramic coating. I don't know how this is gonna be possible, but I'm gonna try it. I got a 30 milliliter bottle and maybe I could have been a little more sparing with it because sometimes the pad is soaked and you could keep going on to other pieces, but I was adding extra pipette every time. I don't know how many pieces you can coat before having to re-coat the pad. I don't know. I'm gonna definitely try and do like two of these with one syringe and then two of those with one syringe and try and like combo up on it. This is tragic. This took like one and a half syringes and it's damn near empty now. So I guess I can't do the bumper trims. I'm just gonna do the chrome. Damn, that sucks. I'm only gonna do this one. It's actually so weird how bright the BMW logo is. We gotta continue. Since this first piece that I coated was plastic, it just fully absorbed all the ceramic that I put onto it. But when I did the chrome, since it isn't as porous as the plastic, I was able to do all of the chrome. I'm so excited. All the chrome on the car is now officially ceramic coated and this thing is not gonna get any more water spots. Hopefully now, right? That's what we hope for. Now, since I'm out of the actual ceramic to coat all this plastic, I'm just gonna hit it with the spray wax. I'm gonna be using this a lot in between washes, probably every like two or three washes. 
just to make sure that the ceramic coat stays nice and rejuvenated all the time. She's officially toasted though. Now anything that's going back on the car that didn't get ceramic coating, it's gonna be getting this. This says a light mist, so I'm gonna do that. Oh my God. Not really light mist, but whatever. And then you buff it in and then you buff it off. These plastic pieces feel extremely slick after that spray, so I feel very good about this. Every time before applying a coating, coming in with the isopropyl alcohol and really wiping it all down and it makes a noticeable difference. It feels so bare after the wipe down, like your finger just gets stuck to the plastic. Like that. I'm going pretty heavy on this just cause I don't know when I'm gonna get this piece this clean again. This diving board metal bumper is temporary because I want to polish it and make it look real shiny like the car. So for now, I'm just going to coat it and call it a day. Damn, it looks so bright now. What? This is sick. Damn, that looks so good. That looks so much better. No matter how hard I push on this, it will not clip in. So, next nice little technique. Just like that, so easy, let's go. Using that screwdriver gave it such a tight fit all the way around. This is so sick. It always used to have a little gap, and now, yeah. And the stain from my exhaust is a lot better now. I have not tried to polish this because I wanna do that for later. Excited. This is looking so good. What the hell? It's so loose. Probably from all that chipped paint. Hopefully this adds a little bit of material. It's definitely not going to, it's so thin. I want this grommet to fit a little tighter. So I'm gonna put some paint on the inside. No, motherfucker. I got the touch up paint on the fucking hood. On the part that's actually visible too. Wow, the ceramic coat just saved the paint. <laughs> it didn't adhere to the ceramic coat. What? That was scuffed. <laughs> no way, it actually kind of worked. <laughs> yeah. It's still not perfect, but it's not coming out with my nail. Yo, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Everything is so shiny now. Boom! Oh my God. <laughs> the chrome trim is officially back on and it made such a difference. It makes the car look way shinier, all buttoned up. Oh my God. <laughs> the glass is no longer the most reflective part.
When I redo that fender, I want to paint match these mirrors to the color of the car. That's going to look so good. That's why I'm just leaving them like this. So if you're gonna try and do this on your own car, I highly suggest at least 15 microfiber towels that are brand new, a five inch microfiber cutting pad instead of the six inch, and then at least a few three inch pads. I think if you have the five inch pad, it's gonna save you a lot of time. It took me so long because I did the whole car twice with two three inch microfiber pads. So it took so long. I was working such small sections. It was so stupid. <laughs> I hope you guys learned from my mistakes. I made a lot in this video, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. Finally, we can go to the dyno. I gotta set a few things up and we're on our way. I've been posting a bunch about where I've been whenever I take these breaks on my Instagram, at E30Joel. Follow me on there, you'll be able to stay up to date with everything I'm doing. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's really long, but I also wanna preface this. The way that I learned how to work entirely on my car is by being in you guys' shoes watching videos that I thought were interesting. And I just continued learning, learning, learning through what I watched. That's why I think it's so valuable to show all the details so that you guys can go ahead and do it on your own because that's why I do it. I love inspiring you guys to want to work on your car because it, at the end of the day, it really isn't as hard as some people may think. Some people may think it's impossible, but I clearly show you guys it's not impossible. There's some struggles sometimes, but that's just the way anything in life is. Anything that's worth it is gonna come with a difficult path. So if you made it to the end and you aren't subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you went down there, subscribed, stay tuned, because now I'm gonna start driving this car a whole lot more. It would really help me out if you leave me a like, and yeah, thank you for watching.